through the whole house on the
peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, our country, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all those who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick and friendless and needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel, and for all who seek the truth, for the leaders of the Church Universal, and for the leaders in our United Methodist Church, and for pastors, and for all those who hold office in this congregation, for all who serve God in the Church, for all own needs, and for others for whom you have called us to pray. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all blessings of the life. We exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We give thanks for all those who have died in the peace of Christ and for the promise of your eternal kingdom. <coughs> In Christ, you have called us to eternal glory and to him who has taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we'll have our children's night.
Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for giving us the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thank you for sending him to us. And let us not forget a single day that you sent him to us for a reason, for a purpose, and to save us. And let us remember that every day, celebrate it every single day, regardless what day of the year it is. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Thanks, Jenny. Now comes the time for our announcements and prayers and concerns. First of all, does anybody have any announcements to make? Yes, Gordon. Uh, daughter, first I had her second boy. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. And what did they do? Tucker. Tucker? Tucker. Good. 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 That's always a joy. Anyone else have any announcements? Jeannie? Uh, Vera Underwood. Aunt Vera Underwood recently lost her sister, Anita. Anita, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I just learned yesterday that a lady from Tiffin passed away, and I got acquainted with her when she would come to our DCOM meetings, Judy Beckler. Okay. And I just thought the way of that lady, and she passed because of the COVID, and her husband is very sick with it now, and some of her family members. Okay. All right. Prayers for them and for all the COVID victims. Well, we lost a neighbor, Pat Crane, that had lived here most of her life, too. Not with COVID, but anyway. Are there any other prayers? Yes. Interesting, I had a lady in service when it was in the cafeteria, uh, one of the, the lunch people, and because they all work so close together, they all have to quarantine for two oh, weeks. Okay. So it's shutting the whole school down. So, oh, dear. So, okay. uh, so, yeah, prayers for uh, patience and smooth sailing and, 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 uh, and that. And then uh, Andrew this week, I'm flying out to help him move from South Carolina to Broughton, Connecticut. And so praying for safe travels there. Uh, Great, great. Are there any others? Okay, if not, let's take a moment of prayer. Let us pray. to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. 
Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded them, traded with them, and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who had the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did no sow, now sow, and gathering when you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But this master said, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, you did you, that I reap where I do not sow, and that gather where I do not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my all with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But for all those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for the worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. May the Lord bless the reading of this word. You may be seated. And now we have some special music.
you very much. That was very pretty. And now we'll have our message, Enter Into the Joy. Parables are stories with deeper meaning. Parables of Jesus are a source of inspiration to his followers and so to for all of us today. Our text today is the parable of talents. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a talent to share for the upbuilding of Springville United Methodist Church? It has been my experience on my previous assignments that whenever I ask someone to give a testimony or to lead the worship or to sing in church or to become one of the church board officers, the usual answer that I receive would be Pastor, I'm sorry, I do not have that talent. Let somebody do it. She is more talented than me. Praise God, here in Springville, I haven't heard that answer yet. What I pray is that all of us are willing to serve in whatever capacity we are able to serve. Our text today tells us that God is the owner and the giver of talents and all that we have. If we are asked to name our assets, Many of us will answer, I have a beautiful house, a large acre of land, a beautiful family, a sports car, a bank account, I know how to sing, to play the guitar, to play the piano. These are just some of my assets, Pastor. Yes, it is true. But let me remind you that all of your assets, our assets, are not your own. God is the true owner of all our assets. The Bible tells us that in the beginning, God created. If God created everything of, of this world, he owns it. God doesn't just own the universe and everything in it. He owns you, you and me. You and me too. And if we are his if we are his children, that is the reason why. They are good and bad stewards. The stewards are people whom the owner entrusts their own. As God's stewards, we ultimately understand the concept of stewardship. When we cons consciously affirm, believe, and live in light of the truth that God is the true owner of all assets. God trusts his servants to manage his assets well. God trusts his servants to manage his assets well. Jesus went on to say in verse 15, the one he gave five talents to another two to another one to each according to his ability then he went away 
the number of talents given to each servant has no significance in and of itself. It simply illustrates a wide range of responsibilities. Jesus has entrusted to his servants various gifts and resources which we are to manage as his behalf. These gifts and resources refer not only to money and possessions, but also to our time as well as to our gifts and skills. In other words, the assets that God entrusts to us are our treasures, time and talents. Jesus is emphasizing that every professing believer, every church member, is to manage what God has entrusted to him or her. Why? God has a purpose for giving you talents. Every member is at a different place in life with different levels of treasures, time, and talents. Nevertheless, we are to manage every dollar or treasure, every moment of time, and every gift of talent with God in mind. God, God rewards servants who are faithful. God rewards servants who are faithful. Jesus said in verses 16, 17, He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So, also he who had the two talents made two talents more. After the master returned, Jesus said in verses 20 to 23, And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little, I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here, I have made two talents more. His, masters, his master said to him, Well done. Good and faithful servant, you have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy. Enter into the joy of your master. Each servant consciously took what the master had entrusted to him and managed it as well as he could. The first two servants demonstrated the attitude that Jesus said every disciple has. So you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. These servants did not boast of what they have accomplished. In return, the servants received a reward when Jesus said, Enter into the joy of your master. If we compare this to the lot of third servant who did nothing with his talents, it is much more different. The servant said, Master, I knew you were to be a hard man. Reaping where you did not sow, 
and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. It produced absolutely nothing with the talent he had given. He had been given. Did nothing to manage or to win or lose or get assets of time, treasures, and talents. The master in the parable rebuked him with his words, You wicked in his lawful servant. You wicked and slothful servant. Friends, this is a dire warning from Jesus. The distinguishing mark between true believers and false believers, between true <coughs> Christians and false Christians, it is the way they manage God's assets. The faith of a true believer is a certain <coughs> faith. If you are true followers of Jesus, you will use your time, treasures, and talents to serve your master. But if you are not true followers of Christ, you will find all kinds of excuses not to give your treasure, not to serve in the church, and not to give your time to God. Let us acknowledge that everything belongs to God. Let us strive to be faithful and be in good stewards of all the talents that He has given us. Our possessions, talents, and time, let us use them to serve God. Let us declare indeed you will hear God say, Enter into the joy of my kingdom. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much this morning for what I'm going to lead into, Pastor. That reminds me. Um, because of the COVID, we're not able to have a lot of Christmas things or do a lot of Christmas traditions that we usually do in this church. So the worship committee has decided we'd like to have people every Sunday, if there's something somebody would like to do, if they'd like to sing uh, a song or a solo, if they'd like to get up and read a poem or get up and, and, and uh, tell us about a wonderful Christmas experience or anything like that, we want to, to hear from all of your talents. So just get in touch with Butch, anybody that would like to do this, and it would be great. It would be something different, but we have to make the best of the situation. So, amen. Uh, would you rise and say with us the last song, Where He Leads Me?
Spirit grant you the willingness to reach yourself completely for the sake of the gospel. And may the love and the compassion and the hope and the faith of Jesus dwell richly within you till the time of his coming, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.